Welcome back to Black News Tonight. As we continue covering today's court ruling that released Bill Cosby from prison, let's focus now on the impact that this may have within the black community and across society. In total, 60, that's six zero women accused Cosby of rape or sexual misconduct. The accusations run from the 1960s to 2018. Those accusations stopped in 2018 because he was convicted and put inside of a prison. For some, the stories of women not heard and not believed symbolize the challenges survivors of sexual violence face all too often. For those who grew up around, or grew up in America, really, they grew up proud to see Bill Cosby as America's TV dad. Yet those allegations tainted the image of a positive black father figure. From the 1960s to the Me Too era of today, a lot has changed, including how we think about sexism, patriarchy, and of course, rape culture. Here to talk about how seeing Cosby walk free could be affecting different parts of our society. I'm joined by two guests, Dr. Brittany Cooper. She is associate professor at Rutgers University. I'm also joined by Tarana Burke. She's an activist and founder of Me Too. Uh, Dr. Cooper, I want to start with you. What is your reaction when you see that the court overturned Bill Cosby's conviction and he walked out of a prison this afternoon? Uh, look, I am appalled. Uh, I think that this is a setback for survivors. I believe the women who accused Bill Cosby. Um, and I think that they deserve justice. And I think that that's the conversation we should be having. I'm deeply disturbed by any narrative in the black community that says that, you know, like, look, Bill Cosby built the, the latter part of his career really after the 2000s. He built his career by shaming poor black folks. And so now they have to listen to analyses that say things like, well, you know, he needs to be let out on this technicality because black folks get railroaded in the prison system. Those are the very black men and black women that he spent his career demonizing while he was the one that was going around, you know, acting in, in concert with the worst stereotypes that white people have made up about who black men are. And I would appeal to black men who keep on trying to defend Cosby to say, look, He's part of the problem for you. He is part of the reason that white people feel emboldened in these stereotypes about violent black men who want to rape white women because while other black men were lynched and unfairly railroaded, he used the cloak of his power and his visibility to go around and actually harm white women, meaning while, while pr pretending to be an upstanding gentleman, right? And shaming black folks who could not participate in that kind of middle-class fantasy. And so he doesn't deserve any mercy from black communities. He doesn't deserve the absolution of our narrative about white supremacy. He's a violent, self-admitted rapist who drugged women and raped them, had sex with them without their consent, which is rape. And that is the only conversation that we should be having. Toronto, what do you say? Listen, I, I completely agree. It is all I could think about were the survivors today and what they must be feeling and how gut-wrenching it is. People have to know that very few people who survive sexual violence in this country see any kind of recourse. No matter what you believe, whether you believe in the legal system or not, this 1% of all um, rape cases actually see conviction. Rape cases that actually go to trial see conviction. 1%. So it's very, very rare to see anybody go to jail for, for committing sexual assault. So it's it's you know, it was really disheartening, mostly to see the comments from people and to see black people celebrating this like a victory. This is not a victory. In fact, even if you are of the belief that Bill Cosby shouldn't be in jail, right? Whether whether you're an abolitionist or you just got ashy politics, if you believe Bill Cosby shouldn't be in jail, that's one thing. But to, but to celebrate victory for black people is just wrong. It's wrong. We can both say, fine, I want him to come out or he can, it's time for him to come home, if that's your belief, and say he is guilty, absolutely, unquestionably guilty of raping, sexually assaulting women, many of those women who are black women. So th this is an interesting, Brittany, Brittany uh, Toronto just raised something really interesting, right? The people who may have different views of the criminal legal system and how, what role they should play in justice. I mean, on the one hand, I mean, there is an argument to be made that if the prosecutor made an agreement that absolved him from prosecution and then they prosecute him, that we don't want to establish that as a precedent. It's similar to the O.J. Simpson thing, O.J. Simpson thing, where a whole lot of black folk are like, O.J. did it, O.J.'s a monster, 
but they also can't plant evidence. Is there space to have both of those conversations? Not the we not making Bill Cosby a martyr or a champion, not defending Bill Cosby, holding him accountable in some way, but also saying, hey, the criminal legal system also is a problem. Look, I think lawyers have to do what lawyers have to do, and I'm a reasonable person, so I understand the legal problems with this case. But for those in our community who want to have these broader conversations about abolition and the way that the criminal justice system, criminal injustice system, criminal punishment system cannot adequately serve our interests, my question becomes, what is your argument for actual accountability? This is a man who admitted under oath that he did precisely the things that he is accused of. And part of the problem I have in my journey to trying to become an abolitionist is precisely for cases like this, when you have predators in the community, we know that they have done it, and then there's never any recourse. And I can't get on board with a racial justice project that asks women to sacrifice their safety for these technical sorts of justice and due process for Black men. That doesn't mean, mean that I don't believe in due process. It means that I'm asking a question about what does it mean for women in our communities to be safe, first and foremost, from the quotidian nature, the pervasive nature of sexual violence? And part of the reason I'm not willing to have this debate with Black folks, right, who want to sort of be apologists for Bill Cosby is because we don't believe women enough. We don't believe girls enough. And then we want to stand up and raise the lynching flag and suggest that this man has been lynched. But we know that he was going around violently violating all kinds of women across racial categories at a whim simply because he was powerful and thought he could get away with it. And then today, he gets away with it. That's not appropriate. That's not justice. And until we can center victims and survivors, and until we can center women and people who are survivors of sexual violence, then we're not actually having a conversation about either justice or accountability. And, and I think that's what I found so disturbing, right? The people who were pretending suddenly to care about due process, suddenly they were constitutionalists. They still didn't say anything about the <laughs> victims. They didn't say anything about survivors. They didn't say anything about holding Cosby accountable. I saw people on, on Instagram, uh, uh, one person uh, said that this was a triumph. Uh, other people said that this was a victory for justice. I, but the, the, the tweet that made me most disturbed, that made me the most unsettled, uh, and this isn't fair, because Ice-T had, tra had a trash remark, uh, Dr. Umar had a remark that I disagreed with. I could go on down the list of people who said, Boyce Watkins is perpetually, perennially, uh, and unavoidably human garbage. But there was a specific response from Felicia Rashad that really, really disturbed me. Um, do we yeah. have it? Can y'all bring that up for me? She said, finally, a terrible wrong is being righted. A miscarriage of justice is corrected. My issue, first of all, saying nothing is always an option. Yeah. Right? I mean, you could just say nothing. Um, you could just be quiet. I, I guess what I'm trying to mm -hmm. understand is, why, why this would happen. Now, why I don't Felicia Rashad's head as much as like... Huh. No, Chiron, I don't think we have to be... How did you feel when you heard that? Yeah, I don't think we have to be in Felicia Rashad's head to understand why she said what she said. I think that it's reflective of a lot of people, both of her age group, but just a lot of Black folks in general. You know, there was the whole conspiracy for years, those of us who were on the right side of this, um, had to listen to people talk about him trying to buy NBC and all the conspiracy theories. But what people don't want to grapple with is the reality that while we have a horrific history in this country of black men being, of, of sexual violence being weaponized against black men, we know that, right? From Emmett Till to Brian Banks, we have seen this over and over and over again. That's not who Bill Cosby is. And the thing that, to your point, Dr. Cooper, the thing that we don't contend with while we're always talking about that part is that Black women have the second highest rate of sexual violence experience in this country. So we can't talk about one without talking about the other. And what Felicia Rashad is doing in that tweet is exactly that, right? It's the thing that people always do. They talk about the miscarriage of justice and how Black men are being lynched and how Black men are being hung out to dry. But when these are happening, this is happening to Black women at exponential rates, we don't hear anything about that. So I'm, I wasn't surprised. I was appalled, but I wasn't surprised. Well, well I, I, me either. I wish we had, but we're going we're gonna to continue to cover this uh, because this is, for me, the most important story in black America right now, not because of Bill Cosby, but because of the implications, because of what it means uh, to have a conversation about a broken criminal legal system or a criminal legal system that can't yield justice at the same time that we have a pervasive rape culture. We have a world that continues to hate black women. 
Uh, and when opportunities like this emerge, and I call them opportunities because it seemed to me that this just became a moment where people could express the most vulgar politics, the most vulgar uh, beliefs about black women and their lack of rapeability. Um, it, it, it's quite disturbing, it's quite stunning to me, but we'll continue to follow, we'll continue to see uh, what emerges with the Bill Cosby uh, case, or I guess we can't even call it a case now, what emerged with Bill Cosby as he is now a free citizen uh, again. Dr. Brittany Cooper, Tarana Burke, thank you so much for joining me on Black News tonight. Thank you.